Hey, how you doing Econ students? Question, is it bad to save money? That is, is saving money in a jar in your house at home bad for the economy? Let's find out by looking at the loanable funds market. Loanable funds are the amount of money that's available to be loaned out. And this is usually done by financial institutions like banks and credit unions. So the loanable funds market brings together borrowers, which make up the demand curve, and lenders, which make up the supply curve. Let's start with demand. Everyday items can be purchased with cash, but for big ticket items, you might need to take out a loan. For example, if a business wants to expand, they need to borrow money because that new factory doesn't generate revenue yet. But how much they borrow depends on how much it costs to take out the loan adjusted for inflation. The real interest rate. If the price of the loan is really expensive because the interest rate is high, they're not going to borrow very much. But if the interest rate's low, they're going to borrow a whole lot more and maybe even invest in a bigger factory. But the demand for loanable funds doesn't just include businesses, it also includes households. People borrow money to buy a car or a home or their dream vacation or to pay for medical treatment. Oh, it's so sad. It's such a sad scene. And the government borrows too, and we could include public borrowing in that demand curve but I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's talk about supply. The amount of money a bank can lend out depends on how much money people deposit into that bank. So the supply of loanable funds all comes down to saving. But not money in a piggy bank or in a jar at home. This is money deposited into the bank that's available to be lent out. This is called domestic savings, but that supply of loanable funds also includes foreigners that want to put money into your country. So money can come into a country or it can leave and that'll affect the supply of loanable funds, but you'll learn more about that in unit six. For now, understand when the real interest rate is low, there's not gonna be very much savings, so the quantity of loanable funds is gonna be small. But when the real interest rate goes up, the quantity that people will save is gonna increase and there'll be more loanable funds supplied. So together, the demand and supply for loanable funds sets the real interest rate. So that's it, that's the graph that you need to be able to draw and analyze anything that affects borrowers, affects the demand curve, and anything that affects savers, that's the supply. So let's go back and answer the first question. Is money in a jar at home bad for the economy? Yes, money in a jar is useless. It's not helping anyone. And if a lot of people did this, the supply of loanable funds would decrease and the real interest rate would go up, so there'd be a decrease in investment and economic growth. But if you took that money and lent it out to some neighborhood kid that has a good business idea, that could actually increase the supply of loanable funds. But there's more to the supply than just individual savers. The supply of loanable funds is made up of private savings. That's savings by you and me, but there's also public savings. That's the money that the government has left over after paying for all its expenses. So the supply curve is made up of both private savings and public savings. And that brings us to the question that you're most likely to see on your exam. Show what happens on the loanable funds market when the government increases deficit spending. In other words, what's gonna happen when the government does more borrowing? I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out. Is it gonna cause a shift in demand or a shift in supply? Actually, it's both. It's one of those weird times when there's two right answers. You can either show an increase in demand or a decrease in supply. If we include public borrowing inside that demand curve and the government borrows more, that's gonna increase the demand of loanable funds. So individuals are borrowing and businesses are borrowing and now the government shows up and they're also borrowing, that's gonna increase the demand and lead to a higher real interest rate. So this graph is totally correct, but there's another way, a better way to draw deficit spending. It's with a decrease in supply. Remember, there's private savings and public savings. If the government's doing a bunch of borrowing, that's gonna decrease public savings. There's all this money to be loaned out, but the government comes in and starts to borrow it, so there's less money left over, and so the supply of loanable funds shifts to the left, and the real interest rate goes up. So this graph is also correct. But the point is, no matter how you draw it, when the government borrows, the real interest rate is going to increase, which causes crowding out. This is the idea that government deficit spending designed to help the economy actually ends up hurting the economy because it increases real interest rates and decreases investment and growth. Okay, so what's the memory device I'm going to put on my wall to help you remember loanable funds? Well, it's right here. Hopefully this will help you remember that the loanable funds market is all about borrowers and most importantly, savers. But not money being saved in a jar at home, it's money in financial institutions that's available to be loaned out. But we're not done yet, there's still two things that you have to do. Number one, if my videos are helping you learn and love economics, make sure to like and subscribe and be sure to take a look at my ultimate review packet. I just made new study guides, they're in there, they're amazing. There's also practice multiple choice questions, free response questions, and full length practice exams. And number two, it's time for a pop quiz. The questions won't be on the screen for very long, so make sure to pause the video and take a look at the right answers in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Till next time.